Hey guys, Brett Buckles here again at Camp Hero Fitness. We're going to go over a few more leg training techniques. Um, we're starting off here with the leg press. Now, if you look at Jayla's feet, you see how I have a more of a narrow stance. Her knees are actually kind of pointed in and her toes are kind of pointed in. And if you see how I'm kind of coaching her to put her hands and the pressure on the outer part of her quad, that's because we're trying to create a good uh, mind-muscle connection there and also increase the tension on that outer swoop to develop it. Um, Jayla's always needed some improvement with her quads. That's kind of been, uh, she's always been a very glute and hamstrings dominant. And so we've been really working hard to um, increase her, basically, a lot of it's just the neurological connection to her quads. You know, sometimes, you know, we have all these muscles everywhere over our body. We have these great athletes, but we don't, um, sometimes we have a hard time connecting to certain muscle fibers. And she's always struggled a little bit with her quads. But now, lately, we've been able to really... Um, get a uh, better and better feel and she's been getting some really good development from taking a very as I always call it on purpose approach now here we have uh, Shannon O'Shea and what she's doing is um, a more of a wide leg you see the wide stance and that lower the lower part of the movement what we're really working on is um, that glute hamstring tie-in and so what I'll do sometimes is have them go short range for like five reps and long range for five reps changing the rep range up kinda keeps the uh, body guessing and then it also creates a really good pump a lot of times um, and then these like a reverse hyper. And what she's focused on here more than anything is the contraction of the glute. You know, she's not trying to get just powered up so much, although she's really good at doing these. Um, her big thing is she's she's contracting her glute up. And now what I'm going to do is provide a little bit of tension there. Now, I'm only providing enough to stimulate the glute. Like, we don't want this to be a battle here where she's trying so hard that her lower back's all tensed up. And, you know, I'm just trying to beat her down. You know, what we're trying to do is provide just the right amount of uh, tension to um, to wear her glutes out and do a little bit more extra fatigue um, without having any weight and she's very excited about that okay now this is kind of our imp improvising of a uh, uh, vertical leg press and this is what's really important you notice how I have those pads under Jayla's back if those pads aren't there it's really hard to get make this movement work in fact you'll put too much pressure on the quad where this is a movement where we're really trying to work the hamstrings and the glutes so what we do is we put the, um, you're going to have to figure the arch out for yourself, but that's the only way to really effectively uh, do it in a Smith machine without just putting too much pressure on your quad. Okay, and then we have Susanna here, we're having her do the squat in the Smith machine. As we all know, Suzanne's a great squatter, and uh, what we like to do with the Smith machine sometimes is it just changes the pressure to where it's a little bit more isolation on the leg. And what I'm doing right there is here, having that low range of motion. I have her do five low, then five in the three-quarter range of motion, right? And then watch. What she's doing is, whenever we're changing like the ranges of motion, I'm gonna show you here with like Chelsea. Um, I think I kinda screwed that up a little bit, but it's okay, we'll keep going. <laughs> is that whenever you do like the low range of motion, say I had Susanna do like in a lower range, and then I had her in three-quarter range, and then a lot of times I'll do a full range. You know, I do sometimes change the range of motions, but always including a full range of motion in the workout at some point in time. You know, I'm a big believer, obviously, in the full range of motion. Okay, and then right here I have uh, Chelsea doing a single leg, um, kind of like a stationary lunge or, you know, uh, single leg squat, right? And it's real important that she's staying as parallel as she can and she's, you know, her, her back leg and her front leg are both bending at 90 degrees, right? And just like with the lunges, you lead with your back leg, you know, it's important she drops the back leg in order to put the tension and not putting tension on her front knee or pushing forward with that. Um, right here with Susanna, I have her doing a stiff-legged deadlift. Now you see I have her in that, just kind of the stretch, that low range, and then full range, you know. We do a lot of changing of rep ranges, like I said, but always incorporating a full range of motion. So never do you get, you never want to get stuck in a rut of doing, you know, uh, just short reps or short range of motion. But I do believe that they're really effective in keeping the body guessing and shocking the body and, you know, stretching what I call, you know, like muscle tension points, things like that. Um, we have Jayla doing some, you know, basically like box jumps. Uh, she's actually really good at these. And then what I'm doing right there, you see the way I'm talking to her. What I'm doing is I'm trying to help coach her on taking what she was doing. She was double jumping. And what we want to do is get her focused enough where rather than taking like a jump jump, you know, what I do is I have her focus on one jump, but at the same time, I'm giving her a new spot to jump each time. You notice how much farther she jumped? Because the first time, her goal was just at the edge there. The second time I put it a little farther 
and then see how I'm pointing farther. What I'm doing, I'm giving her a visual perspective. That's where she's aiming for now. Watch how easy, look how much farther she jumped. And actually, we didn't stage that at all. I did that during the video. And it was just because what you're realizing is how important the mind plays a role. Like if you set your, your goal, let's say it's like running a 40 yard dash, and you slow down when you hit the 40, you're only going to run so fast, but you want to run through the 40 yard, correct? Same kind of concept, when you're doing your jumps, make sure you're setting a visual uh, goal farther than what you're trying to achieve. And then right here, we have uh, Shannon just doing some variations of step ups. You know, fast, more of like an aerobic type of movement or, you know, uh, side step ups working on the inner thigh and some working the outer thigh. And then this is one of my favorites. This is Emily Jones. She's doing stiff legged deadlift to a stationary lunge. Stiff legged deadlift, stationary lunge. Any of you who have never tried this, you can get a lot of weight and really maximize the stretch on the single leg that you really can't do if you don't have something to balance on. You know, a lot of people do these and use it as a balancing movement, and that's great if you're trying to work on your core and your balance, but if you're trying to build muscle, you're trying to really develop the shape of that muscle, then you know we're working more for the isolation and the direct intentional uh, development of the hamstring and glute, and in order to do so, you know we need a little bit more uh, control, you know, uh, versus having our mind and our body, you know, all over the place working, you know, basically focus too much on balance and not enough on the direct tension of the muscle. Uh, probably my clients, it's probably one of their favorite exercises when it comes to uh, building hamstrings and glutes. And they're kind of ending it here with uh, Shannon, kind of doing the same thing. And see what, what this is allowing her to do is get a little bit more depth. For some of you guys who are really flexible, um, I remember I used to train uh, some Maverick dancers. Uh, in fact, like Sequel Molina was one who was so flexible that you know you have to be able to put her on a. Uh, kind of a higher platform in order for her to get even remotely, uh, you know, worn out by the movement or stimulated in the way that she would need uh, to suit her needs. So anyway, this will kind of sums up the end of our four-part uh, series on legs. We'll be having more videos coming soon, and I hope you guys enjoyed it.